The Sega Nomad shipped with an LCD screen that was standard for the time, but has not aged very well. There's been a few upgrades available over the years, including one that was just released, the RGB driver. Let's see how it compares to the others. LCD mods have been available for the Nomad for a while now, with the most intriguing being the LCD DRV, which I'm guessing stands for LCD driver. That was released a few years ago and used the Nomad's RGB output to feed the LCD, as opposed to using composite video, which was more commonly used up until now. This resulted in a very sharp output that was an impressive upgrade for Nomad users. It had a few issues though, the most noticeable was a shimmer that would happen when scrolling, I think which is a result of a non-integer scale onto the resolution of the screen. Also, if you modded your Nomad to play Sega Master System games, those looked a bit off as well. The people who made the LCD driver just released an updated version, the RGB driver. This supposedly has interpolation and an on-screen display built in, so let's check it out and see how it works. Installation is the same as the LCD driver, with the addition of a replacement wheel that allows you to access the menu. Keep in mind this is a new wheel that you need to buy separately. The kit doesn't come with it, and you can't use the one built into the Nomad. Pushing the button on the wheel brings up the menu, with options for width, phase, position, brightness, contrast, and backlight setting. I'm very interested in phase, as this might allow you to dial in a better tuned signal, so I used the 240p test suite to launch a checkerboard pattern and see how it looked. Most Genesis games use a resolution of 320, but some use 256. I started with the 256 mode, and no matter what I tried, I couldn't find a combination of width and phase that dialed in the signal perfectly. I then switched to 320 mode and was able to find a width that looked right, then dialed in phase as best I could. As an FYI, sometimes older consoles won't be able to dial in a perfect phase, so just get it as close as possible and try to keep any interference to the sides. Now that the phase was set, I used a grid pattern to center the image as best I could. These games were originally made with CRT overscan in mind, so it's okay if some of the sides get cut off. So let's check out how it actually looks. The 240p test suite also has a scroll test that uses the sonic background, and it's available in both resolutions. It looks like in 320 mode there isn't any shimmer, however it feels like a much softer image compared to the LCD driver. I mean, it's not composite video soft, but it's definitely a noticeable difference. The 256 mode seems to look okay, even though the phase wasn't able to be dialed in. I think whatever type of interpolation they're using probably helps that. As for SMS, it still doesn't look that great. I'm not sure if it's just what to expect from a Nomad's internal screen, but neither one really made the SMS games stand out. I mean, it wasn't terrible or anything, but it certainly didn't look as good as some of the Genesis games did. Also, there's some kind of interference on the screen that's not always noticeable and really hard to capture on camera. It's not a huge deal, but it wasn't there on the LCD driver, so I thought I'd mention it. Hopefully this is coming through on your screen, and if you're watching this in 4K, there's probably a better chance that you'll see it, rather than just scaling or camera artifacts. So overall, the RGB driver is both a step forward and a step behind. There's no more shimmer, and I really love the OSD, but I miss the razor sharp pixels of the LCD driver. Neither are a bad solution, but I really hope someone comes out with a board that solves all these issues and is much easier to buy. And that's the last issue I have with both of these boards. They're only available in Japan. I'm not really sure what's up with that, and it's not fair to speculate, but it just seems odd to close off worldwide shipping. A few friends of mine were lucky enough to have contacts in Japan, which is how I was able to get mine. So my conclusion on these screen updates is the same as usual. If you're buying the Nomad as a collector's item, it's my opinion that you just keep it stock and enjoy the nostalgia of the terrible screen. Alternatively, if you're buying the Nomad to actually use like I do, any screen update will be better than the original. Not only will you get a much better picture, but the battery will last a lot longer. While both the LCD and RGB driver are great, 
There's definitely still some room for improvement though, but at the moment I believe they're the best you can get from the Nomad. Well that's it for this time. If you like what you saw here, please consider signing up for any of the support services such as Patreon or Floatplane, because your support is what allows things like this video and the research and development that went into it to happen. Also, if you want to be kept in the loop of everything going on in the retro gaming scene, please check out the weekly podcast available on Wednesdays as a video or on every audio podcast platform. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.